Am I wrong for calling a guy's mom when I was trying to get him to leave me alone and stop guilting me? I had what I thought was a casual thing with this guy named Adam for a month or so. But last week, I said that I was going to move to a new state and he got pretty upset and said that he wanted to be with me. I said that I wasn't really trying to be with anyone, I don't want to spend my 20s like that, and he started getting really manipulative, even saying he couldn't live without me. That made me angry. I told him, how the fuck did you get to 24 years old without me? How the fuck are you here now then? (laughs) <laughs> wait i'm gonna try it again that made me angry i told him how the fuck did you get to 24 years old without me how the fuck are you here now then that's how i like picture her saying it because that's how i would say it he said he had been really struggling before he met me and that was the first thing that made him feel hopeful this honestly felt weird to me because we haven't been emotionally open with each other i thought we were just having casual sex and it felt uncomfortable that he was seeming to say his mental health depended on continuing to have sex with me it felt coercive and gross to be honest like he was guilting me into continuing to sleep with him so i called his mom saying that i was worried about her son because i had a casual thing with him that i didn't think he was emotionally invested in and was about to leave for a new place but he freaked out and said he couldn't live without me and i felt worried that he would do something when i left She seemed kind of weirded out that I was saying all of that. So to explain, I said that her son was telling me that if I left him, despite never being in a relationship with him, he couldn't go on and I had to leave because I wasn't putting myself in that position of being with someone out of fear. So I needed her to check on him. She was like, all right, I'll check on him, but still kind of seemed weird on the phone. I moved to my new home, but afterwards I got this long, furious text from Adam because he found out I called his mom. But he is really angry I told her that he was implying he would do something if I left him because he had not said that. I replied to him saying, but that's literally what you said. And he told me he was just lashing out, being upset, and I didn't have to repeat it like it was serious. This manipulative piece of shit, see? Like, he was acting like that. That that This just shows that whole desperation act that these guys put on when you leave them. If you leave me, I'm gonna... I'm gonna it's all bullshit. I told him not to say stuff like that if it's not serious and he got angry asking if I had never exaggerated something when I was upset. I didn't reply. I didn't want to get pulled in honestly. So am I the asshole for calling For telling my coworker she should not carry a designer bag when working with low income clients? My coworker is a young woman in her mid 20s and just got hired for the position. Without giving too much away, we work with vulnerable and low income clients in our community. We then link them to resources and it's a very intensive job that requires us to meet with them at their homes. Now she is really sweet and nice and obviously comes from means. I accompanied her one time on a visit and she brought a large tote bag with the words Christian Dior. And the words really stood out in large letters. I suggested she leave it in the car and told her it's not appropriate to carry such a bag. Telling my coworker she should not carry a designer bag when working with low income clients. The bag had the words Christian Dior in large letters and I suggested she leave it in the car. I said it's not really appropriate to carry such a bag when visiting the home of a disadvantaged client, especially when they're having trouble making ends meet. She did leave it in the car, but things seemed a bit awkward afterwards. I was talking with another coworker and they think that I did overstep my bounds. They think the bag is work appropriate, but I think it's bad taste to flaunt such a bag considering our client population. Also, I'm not her supervisor. I was assigned to help her train. For asking my fiance to sleep on the pullout couch so my daughter could sleep in my bed. I, 43 male, have a fiance, 39 female, and also a daughter, 16 female. We traveled to visit my fiance's parents, and last night we got a hotel room. My fiancé and I were in the master bed and my daughter was in the pullout couch in the next room. Shortly after we fell asleep, my daughter came in and asked if she could sleep in my bed with me. My daughter is on the spectrum and has anxiety from previous trauma and some trouble with being alone in unfamiliar places. I said absolutely and offered to sleep on the pullout couch with her but she said it was very uncomfortable. Asking my fiancé to sleep on the pullout couch so my daughter could sleep in my bed. I asked my fiancé if she'd be willing to sleep on the pullout couch for the night and she seemed a little annoyed. I offered to get another room for us or to figure something else out but she insisted it was okay. So we shared the master bed and my fiancé slept on the pullout. When we got home, she seemed kind of passive aggressive and when I asked what was wrong, she said she felt completely sidelined. And that I treated her with no respect or decency last night. I said I was sorry but my daughter was in distress and I had to do something. She's insisting that she's not a little girl anymore, so I could have done something, and I said she's getting out of line. 
Am I the asshole for letting my stepdaughter spend a night in jail? My wife and I have been married for six years and we have two kids, eight and five. My wife also has a daughter, Mary 18, from before we got together. She's a senior in high school and she currently lives with us. She usually goes to see her bio dad two weekends a month, but due to extracurricular activities, it hasn't been that often. And her dad lives two hours away, so she usually drives over there. Well, this past weekend, my wife took my younger kids over to see her sister. And Mary said she was going over to stay with her dad. So I was by myself, and at 3 a.m., I was woken by a call. My wife told me Mary had been arrested. Am I the asshole for asking my fiancé to sleep on the pullout couch so my daughter could sleep in my bed? I asked my fiance if she'd be willing to sleep on the pullout couch for the night and she seemed a little annoyed. I offered to get another room for us or to figure something else out, but she insisted it was okay. So we shared the master bed and my fiance slept on the pullout. When we got home, she seemed kind of passive aggressive and when I asked what was wrong, she said she felt completely sidelined and that I treated her with no respect or decency last night. I said I was sorry, but my daughter was in distress and I had to do something. She's insisting that she's not a little girl anymore, so I could have done something, and I said she's getting out of line. Am I the asshole for letting my stepdaughter spend a night in jail? My wife and I have been married for six years, and we have two kids, eight and five. My wife also has a daughter, Mary 18, from before we got together. She's a senior in high school, and she currently lives with us. She usually goes to see her bio dad two weekends a month, but due to extracurricular activities, it hasn't been that often. And her dad lives two hours away, so she usually drives over there. Well, this past weekend, my wife took my younger kids over to see her sister. And Mary said she was going over to stay with her dad. So I was by myself, and at 3 a.m., I was woken by a call. My wife told me Mary had been arrested. Am I the asshole for letting my stepdaughter spend a night in jail? She lied about going to her dad's and of course instead went to a party. The party got busted and Mary tried to run but got caught. My wife said the police would allow me to go get Mary right away instead of keeping her in jail but I had been drinking. I told her I'd get her first thing in the morning but my wife yelled at me for being irresponsible by drinking to that point in case of an emergency. I said I was home by myself and everybody was supposed to be hours away. When I went to get Mary the next day, it was obvious she had been crying a lot and didn't say a word to me on the way home. Now my wife and Mary are disappointed in me, but I said maybe she shouldn't lie and do stupid shit. I have an autistic 14-year-old daughter who has terrible hygiene. I have to fight with her to get her to shower, brush her teeth, and clean up after herself during her period. It is disgusting. Blood everywhere and the constant washing of her underwear. She sees no problem with her inability to clean herself up. I told her that people are going to bully her in school if she smells that bad and that it's hard to recover from that socially and she ignored me. Well, she had her period last week. I picked her clothing and allowed her to wear white pants. I wanted to see if she would clean up after herself so that the pants would be clean when she came back home. Before I could even drop her off, the pants were red. I stayed silent. I dropped her off like normal. She needed to learn how these types of situations will impact her social life if she continues to live like a slob. She came home in tears. The kids were ruthless. She was mocked for her strong smell and the red on her pants. It hurt me to see her like this, but I was not seeing the changes that had to be made. For the rest of the week, she took good care of herself. There were no stains, she showered herself, and would spray perfume to maintain a flowery scent. My husband and I fought about this, though. He called me some very hurtful words because of my choice. He said I handled it poorly and that she'll probably be paying for this for the rest of the school year. However, I see it as a life lesson, and it actually yields results on like my husband's soft approach. So, am I in the wrong for setting up my daughter to be bullied in school? I, 28 female, have a knee, 16 female. She's my only sister's only child. Two years ago, I married a very wealthy man, 34 male, and because of the pandemic, last Christmas was my first with my in-laws. My mother-in-law gifted me a coat that's worth more than $20,000. I saw her wearing it, asked where she bought it, and she said it'll be my Christmas gift from her. I didn't know how much it was. I knew it was expensive, but I thought maybe around 3,000 at most. I was visiting my sister last January when my niece saw it. She googled the brand and showed me how much it really was. However, last week, I wore it while visiting my sister. While I was putting it back on to leave, I felt something go splat on my back and then my knees started cackling and the smell of paint hit me. I was so pissed off while she was not apologetic at all. Her mom screamed at her and said that she was grounded. Then she said she'll pay for the dry cleaning. While I was in my car, still in shock by the way, I got an alert that my niece posted a reel. It was of her doing a prank on me, and she said, I'm going to hit my aunt's $20,000 coat with paint-filled balloon to see how she reacts. 
I saved it on my phone, sent it to her mom and told her that the week's worth of grounding is not enough. She didn't reply, but I saw that my niece took it down. It got less than five views by then. The next day, I found out that my coat could not be saved, so I called my sister and told her that her daughter has to pay it back. Well, we got into an argument and she said that they will not be paying, and if I wanted a new one, I should get my husband to buy it for me. I think that they should pay for it. They can afford to. In my opinion, they should sell my niece's car and pay me back the money. We did not reach an agreement, so I told her that I'll be suing and reminded her that I have video evidence of her daughter A, did it on purpose for online clout, and B, knew exactly how expensive it was. People in my life are not objective at all. I have some calling me an a-hole, some saying that they're the a-holes for not buying a new one, and some so obsessed with the price of the coat that they're calling me an a-hole for simply owning it and wanting a new one. Am I in the wrong for wanting to take my niece to court over a coat? 